Yo, this is Bushwick Bill, and you're watching Nardward's Video Vault. Remember that, Nardward Video Vault. is It's kind of a tongue twister, but the Nard is the ward, and the video is the vault. What can I tell you? It's Bushwick Bill, and I'm happy to be here, kindly. Nardward! Who are you? My mother's child. You are Bushwick Bill. <laughs> yeah, I'm Bushwick Bill. How you doing? <laughs> Bushwick Bill, welcome to South by Southwest, Austin, Texas, where you do not live. No, I do not live here, but it's where music lives, so I guess technically I am living here. Bushwick Bill, right off the bat, I want to ask you about this particular record right here. First Priority, Basement Flavor. What can you tell the people about it? About First Priority, you're talking about MC Lights. Mom and Dad record label with Audio 2 and the rest of these characters? Indeed, yes, and Mishi Me from Canada. Well, really what I like about this record right here personally is that it shows diversity and flavor. And if you think about it, Audio 2, 50 Cents just sampled them three years ago and went platinum again on that beat. And so did Mary J. Blige sing on the same beat that Audio 2 did Milk is Chilling. So there's... Beats off of this album has been multi-platinum since this album has came out with other artists rapping over the same beat. Bushwick Bill, you started as a dancer in New York, the Swatch Watch competition? Yes. I am a breakdancing genius. <laughs> and I see, um, when I was young, I was into graffiti, breakdancing, and DJing, and then later on found that I could rap, but... I'm a part of the five elements of hip hop. As far as breakdancing, producing, DJing, and writing graffiti, it's, yeah, it's all the same. What were the dances? The Jerry Lewis, the Pee Wee Herman, the Smurf, what were the dances? Yeah, those were all of the dances right there, in including the original moves that we would make up during breakdancing. You know what I mean? Like like the head spin into the windmill. You know what I mean, it's just, now that I'm older, I feel all those pains in my joints. <laughs> Bushwick Bill, the early days of Bushwick Bill, the Rhinestone Wrangler. You worked at the Rhinestone Wrangler. What was the Rhinestone Wrangler? <laughs> well, first it was the Rhinestone Wrangler, then it was the Thunderdome, but I was a busboy with a DJ, rest in peace, DJ Lonnie Mack. The biggest act back then was Captain Jack and DJ Lonnie Mack, and Lonnie Mack got me a job there, and I was a busboy. And every time I'd finish cleaning up the glasses and stuff around the club that people was finished with, and they would put on any beats from New York, I'd get out there and start locking and popping and doing the Smurf and the Jerry Lewis and the Pee Wee Herman and you name it. Bushwick Bill, I want to ask you about the OG Ghetto Boys. What can you tell the people about the Car Freak Ghetto Boys? Okay, well, right here, this dude right here is where the name of the record label rap -a -Lot, came from. He is Sir rap -a -Lot. That's Raheem and that's Jukebox. And this was the first song off of the Making Trouble album. This was the first single. And Raheem, if you remember, he um, got signed to A&M Records and he put out the song Dance Floor and he used the Keep On Trucking beat. Yeah, that was the first big deal that rap -a -Lot had for distribution was A&M Records with his solo. Another Ghetto Boys I want to ask you about with this particular Ghetto Boys, which you're on, Bill, Ghetto Boys Be Down. What can you tell the people about Ghetto Boys Be Down? There you are. Okay, now look, if you check out the transition, right? This is what I want you to see right here. Okay, Raheem went solo. Sir rap -a -Lot wasn't in the group anymore. The only original one still there is Jukebox. This, this is Jukebox right here. Reddy Red brought Prince Johnny C down, and they're from Trenton, New Jersey, and I'm from Brooklyn. Bushwick Bill, is it true you're one of the only people in the entire world, if not the only person, to have a birth certificate and a death certificate? Yeah. When I lost my eye, I died in June 19th, 1991, at approximately 4.35, and I didn't come to until in the morgue after 7 o'clock. And they were actually getting me ready for autopsy, so... That's at Ben Tob. They could tell you the whole thing. I was DOA on arrival. They have all the information right there. Ben Tob used to... And then you woke up in the morgue and then took a piss on a cop? Yes. I had to pee so bad I pulled out the catheter and I jumped down and, and the cop just stood there like this and I just peed. And then I realized what I was doing because you got to remember, I didn't know I was dead. You know what I mean? So I just had the biggest urge to pee and I jumped down. Then, of course, he ran out of the room and the technician ran out of the room for the morgue. And, and it, was, it was a serious moment.
And when they said you're dead, you really were dead? Like you had a toe tag on too? I had the toe tag on. I was in the morgue, dead. You know what I mean? They didn't have me in the hallway. They didn't have me inside of a room waiting to transfer me. I was actually on the cold slab getting ready to be pushed in. And then how much later did this LP cover happen? When did this LP cover shot happen? Um, the day before my surgery to remove the eye. Mm. And you had no idea this was going to happen? People just showed up with cameras? They just, um, the hospital had me drugged up. So I was being prepared for surgery. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink anything. They had me on a bunch of medicine. And I didn't see the album cover until after it hit the shelves. But I mean, such is life. Bushwick Bill, Willie D heard you doing Rebel Without a Pause. That's how you ended up in the Ghetto Boys? How did you end up in the Ghetto Boys? I don't know who's giving you your information, but it's so weird. Okay, this is what happens. I was hanging out with DJ Ready Red. I didn't know Willie D. I knew Scarface. I knew Little J because I hung out with him a lot, and we went over the Bible many times on different subject matters. And I'm hanging out with Ready Red, and the person who actually heard me rapping Rebel Without a Pause was John Beto, and he's the one that, that told Lil J that just see if Bill could rap something. And that's where the whole thing started from. Willie D had nothing to do with the influence of me rapping whatsoever. Going to Houston OG. This is an important Houston OG group, isn't it? Royal Flush. Oh, yeah. I love it on here because they thank you, quote, Bushwick Bill for bugging. Why were they thanking you for the bugging? Because <laughs> I, would, I, I would always trip out on, on them about hip-hop history. Being that I'm from New York, you know what I mean? I would talk to people about hip-hop history, things that they didn't know at the time, you know what I mean? But they, they were very into hip-hop, but they just didn't grow up around it like I did in Brooklyn. So I knew a little bit more than what they knew. What's the importance of Royal Flush to Houston rap? Mm. As far as I'm concerned, it just showed diversity. You know, I mean, it was really about diversity. It was about showing the fact that, you know, you could dance or die. You know, everything didn't have to be gangster and everything didn't have to be about death and misery. It could also be about having a good time and enjoying yourself in, in, inside of the, the areas of the city that's outside of Fifth Ward. That is, it, it showed that there was more sides to Houston than just Fifth Ward. Dr. Dre, stranded on death row. He got to do that amazing intro. What do you remember about that amazing intro for The Chronic? Um, I remember Warren G and Snoop inviting me to the studio, and Dr. Dre's in there with the, one of the guys from a rap group called Poor, Broke, and Lonely. And I heard the theme to Stranded on Death Row, which reminded me of Dark Shadows, the old radio TV show. And I asked him if I could say something. And he said, no, because I have to finish this album mix. And I was like, come on, just let me say something. And if it doesn't work, then cool. I kept bothering him till he let me say it. Then he said, can you do that again? And then that's how I got on it. Bushwick Bill, the song Size Ain't. Shit, yeah. You talk about, quote, shit, a dick, and a cigarette. Yes. I said, I will punk you out and make you be my bitch. Let nigga shit on his dick for a cigarette. I was talking in jail terms because that's what people do in jails. So I was like, if you're going to write a song, you have to write it in a way that the people who've been to jail know it and the ones who haven't been there could ask the question and find out. You know, so that was just a song written about what can go on in jail. You know, because if you saw the movie Scared Straight, you remember how they were talking to, to those kids and telling them what they would make them like if they came in there? I'm talking about the original Scared Straight. That's where a lot of the ideas from the song came from. Bushwick Bill, are there many songs written about you or titled Bushwick Bill? Mm, not that I know of, no. There's one by Wesley Willis called Bushwick Bill. There is? I didn't know that. There is indeed. He's passed away, but these are some of the lyrics. Wesley Willis's Bushwick Bill. You are a gangster rapper. You are a gangster rap artist. You can really knock it out. You can really whoop a camel's ass. Wowzer. That's tight. Pretty cool. Um, I did hear that um, the artist from Sublime, the one that, that passed away, that he, he mentioned me on one of his albums. He sampled the Chucky song. I just don't know which album that was. I've been trying to find it and listen to it. But that's the only thing I've ever heard of. And Ice-T on the Power album. Ladies, we're not just talking about you because some of you niggas are bitches too. He sampled that from Size Ain't Shit. That's like the only two things I know now the new one that you just told me. Bushwick Bill, back to punk for a second. You like Danzig? What other punk stuff do you like? You like Danzig? Yeah, Danzig is cool. We, we was on the same label with Rick Rubin. Yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. I, I like Anthrax too. 
and I like Twisted Sisters. I mean, I like a lot of music, man. And, oh, I also like, um, what's his name? The one that did Sid and Nancy, Sid Vicious. I, li- I like Sid Vicious and I like Billy Idol. And, I mean, I like, I like a lot of music, man. Well, you're wearing a backpack right now, and I also saw you wearing a Yoda backpack. That was incredible. What's the Yoda backpack you have? Well, I decided to put the Chucky down because if you look at the whole Chucky mentality, even when he gets a chance to come back, he doesn't seem to quite get it right. You know what I'm saying? And then Yoda is more like underestimate my size, do you? You know, he's more about the wisdom, and he's, he's more about rolling with the, the force of being better. That's what being a Jedi is, living above the lie. <laughs> that was your Yoda backpack. Where'd you get your Yoda backpack? I actually got it out here at um, South by last year. Bushwick Bill, Gangster Nip. Did he invent horrorcore? No. Um, what Gangster Nip did is that he is horrorcore. He didn't have to invent it. You wasn't going to hear any other style from him. When the people heard me do Chucky and hear him do his song, they coined the phrase horrorcore, but he was just always like a, how, the best way I could put it is like, he was like a Steven Spielberg and a Edgar Allan Poe Hitchcock rapper. You know what I mean? Where he could, he could take a mood in a moment and tell you how he could s- put 500,000 cops head inside of a vacuum cleaner. You know what I mean? <laughs> and talk about migraine headaches, make him sleep in a toaster. It's like, you know, the things he, he would say was like, it, it was vivid. Like, you could actually picture what he's saying. You know what I mean? But he, he never coined the phrase horrorcore rap. It was some media dude that said it after hearing Chucky and Gangsta Nip's album. But neither one of us came up with the phrase, no. Bushwick Bill, why should people care about Bushwick Bill? They don't have to. As, as long as I love me, I'm happy. Because if, if I really was worried about what people thought about me, my arms are short. You know what I mean? I'm short. I'm not average height. I can't reach everything everybody else could reach. If I would have believed the things that people told me when I was younger, I wouldn't even think I could accomplish half the things I've accomplished. So they don't really have to like me. What they need to do is love themselves because I love me and like me and I'm happy with me all by my damn self. Well, thanks so much, Bushwick Bill. Keep on rocking in the free world and do, 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 do.